I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here with another overdying project on what was not limited edition, but is now a discontinued yarn base from Knit Picks. Alex is a really fun yarn base. It is 66% baby alpaca, 30%, sorry, 34% lurex. And lurex is a metallic fiber that is a little bit thicker than Stellina. It gives a lot more of a regular repeating color and it is incredibly sparkly. You can see the sparkle there. And if you over dye it with something dark, it really, really pops. I want to take a moment and give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Corinne. Corinne, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dive Hut Weekly. I've dyed Lurex spaces a lot. Uh, well, to dye for has one. Uh, but this alpaca Lorex is fairly unique. But the uniqueness of the Lorex blend isn't why I picked this yarn for this project today. I picked this yarn because we are in a hand wound ball of yarn. Each of these are 50 grams. And I want to over dye these using the Ziploc bag method where we're gonna put the balls of yarn, some dye powder, and then eventually some liquid into a plastic bag squish the dye through, let it sit, and then steam set. This technique has given some really fun effects in the past, but one thing that we have going for us here is it makes, the fact that it's in this ball gives us almost a tie-dyed effect because it'll be easier for dye to strike to the outside than it will to the inside. So we may end up with some of this beautiful Penny Royale color showing through. I'm not planning on pre-soaking the yarn, uh, and well, I guess we can go get a Ziploc bag and pull some dye colors to get started. And so I'm gonna wanna make sure I pull some colors that will go well with this lavender, beautiful purple color, but also some deep colors that will really make that Lorex pop. And so I'm very excited here. Before we talk about the colors, I'm gonna go ahead and pop our two balls of yarn into a gallon size Ziploc bag. But this is the palette that I'm leaning towards today. Derma Acidize in Spearmint Breeze, Bright Aqua, Midnight Blue, and Deep Purple. Now Deep Purple can strike pretty quickly, which is really, really nice uh, for these types of situations. And the other colors I think would pop on top of the lavender, and I think lavender would fit very well with all of these colors. So now I'm gonna go put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, Safety Glasses, and Gloves, and we can add some of the dry dye powder into our Ziploc bag to kind of cover the outside of these yarn balls before we go add liquid and try to squish everything through. And as for any dye that gets on my gloved fingertips, I do have a yarn mop that I'm using through multiple videos I am working on today, and I'll be wiping the excess dye I have onto here. This mop may or may not make another appearance in this video, but uh, I will have a short talking all about it on the channel at some point. All right, now one nice thing about doing this technique in a Ziploc bag today is that uh, as we go about it and squish it, there's not like a zip tie. We're not likely to get tangles. I think it should work out really nicely. Okay, let's get our Spearmint Breeze. And I'm going to try to put this sort of down by one end. I want to attempt to treat the yarn as similar as I can, but there are definitely going to be differences between the yarn and the end. Just because, I mean, it's sort of like a tie-dye thing, there's no way for it to be the same. Now. I do want to make sure my fingers are nice and dry before going into the next dye color. Not just because I want uh, to make sure that, you know, I can deliver the dry dye powder, this is Bright Aqua, onto the yarn, but it's also because I don't want to introduce moisture into the dye itself, because if I do that, then in theory, uh, it could clump and be harder to use, and no one wants that. I love the bright aqua color so, so much. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is rotate the yarn over. And I think there should be no dye on my gloves from that. But in doing so, some of the spearmint breeze has moved uh, and the bright aqua has moved. This is some deep purple bringing in here. 
Uh, maybe we'll do a little bit more spearmint. I did get some dye on the outside of the bag, which is not ideal, but this is why I'm working on a protected work surface. Uh, <laughs> and I have a damp paper towel on hand just for this. And when I go and set this yarn aside to set overnight, sort of at room temperature, while I'm doing that, I'm realizing that white label's in the way, so I'm going to flip this around. Uh, while I'm doing that, I will have this in a secondary container, uh, and we'll rinse out the off, off the outside of the container as well. Okay, some midnight blue. Ooh, I'm almost out of midnight blue. I need to add that to my reorder. Now, <laughs> Dharma does trade for charge for shipping, so when I reorder yarn, I try not to do it that often. But one little tip I have is that if you have a dyeing notebook that you use to keep track of your projects or notes along the way, keep a post-it note on the front of it. And there you can keep track of colors that you're using a lot, colors that you might be running low of. And so then when it's time to reorder, when you're about to go place an order, then you have a list ready to go. Okay, and Spearmint Breeze. Just a little bit on this side as well. And just like that, we have all of the acid dyes, at least, on our yarn. Right here I have in some hot tap water uh, four tablespoons of white vinegar, and the volume's about 300 milliliters because that's the markings I have on here. And so now I'm gonna pour, oh, look at those colors. <gasps> some of this liquid in here. Attempting to keep it on the yarn, but I have a feeling a lot of the color, sorry, a lot of the dye is just going through. So what I want to do now is squish things <laughs> uh, and the bags aren't closed yet. We don't want to pop it. so. We don't want too much air, but we do want this liquid to soak into the ball of yarn. And we don't want all the colors to mix too much, but see, oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see through the bag super well, but see that contrast with the Lurex? Oh, stunning. Now this yarn is non-super wash. And I would say at this point, we have it pretty much soaked into our yarn, which is kind of nice. And the other nice thing is that I see multiple colors. I see more blue, I see more teal, because uh, I was worried that we would end up with all the colors sort of blending together entirely. There's a tiny bit more water here, which I am gonna put in. So you see different colors in there. It doesn't look like it's that pigmented yet but I am just trying to work things through. And while we could go ahead and steam set this yarn as it is right now, one of the reasons why I like to wait uh, overnight is, well, because this could be a fun project to do for solar dyeing. It's the middle of winter right now, so that's not as useful. Uh, but, yeah, it's there's no harm in waiting overnight to give the colors time to soak in, because if we have, oh, and I can take off my respirator now. If we have some areas in this yarn that is still wet, while it is soaking with this liquid overnight, some of the dye could travel still as the water moves through and sort of wets the areas that are still dry. So we could end up with some more color coverage, maybe, than we might have otherwise. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna take this, take this bag, Pop it in a secondary container that I put some paper towels on the bottom. So that way, I mean, it's a little damp, but I'm not seeing color. This way we can know if we're leaking. <laughs> and we're going to set this aside until tomorrow, where we will take a closer look at the yarn and heat set the color properly using a steamer basket. It's the next day, and the bag is looking a little steamy. Now, oh, look at those colors. Looks so peacock. Now, if I squeeze it now, oh, if I squeeze it now, there is a little bit of color in the water, 
but the water is mostly clear. Uh, we can steam set it directly in the bag. I don't need to take it out yet. So let's go over to the steamer basket. In my 12 quart pot, I have an inch and a half of water that I'm heating up with the steamer insert. And I'm gonna bring over our yarn, but open the bag while I steam set it. Ooh, check that out. Um, and the reason why I'm opening the bag is just so that way things don't swell up as the temperature changes. In theory, this is the second time I've reused this particular plastic bag. And unfortunately, it'll probably be the last time uh, because the texture of the plastic seems to change over time. But uh, whenever you can reuse something, that is good. So now I need to wait for things to heat up, but I'm gonna steam set this for, I think, 40 minutes, just because since we've got balls of yarn, it might take a little bit more time for the centers to heat up. So I'll see you in 40 minutes. It's been 40 minutes, and we may still have some dye that is left in the bag itself, likely because there could be some dye that wasn't touching yarn. But actually, I'm not seeing any. Okay, no, there's a hint down in that corner down there. But I'm gonna set this aside to cool, and then once our yarn has cooled off, then we can wash it. But you can see we're still very, very steamy. We'll just try to be patient to let it cool off. But ugh, the contrast of the Lurex with these like muted, cool toned colors. I don't even care if we have any of the original color left. What we've got here is stunning. Our yarn is cooled, so let's wash it. I'm gonna take it out of the bag. There's very little dye left in here, maybe a tiny bit. And I'll turn on the water. I'm really only gonna be rinsing the yarn right now. Um, and that's because I'm gonna wanna wait for it to dry before I attempt to unravel these balls. But what we can do is peek a little bit. We got really good coverage. Oh, oh, okay, I was about to lament that I didn't take a snip of the yarn before we started dyeing. But I actually have two more balls of this yarn, so we'll be, have something to compare it to. Now, we're not seeing any bleeding. I'll wash the yarn with soap after, but I'm gonna carefully put this through my spin dryer to spin out the excess water. And once it's dry, well, we'll take a look and get ready to unravel it. You know, the colors were much more saturated when the yarn was wet. But, I mean, the colors are still gorgeous, it's just there's not quite as much contrast as I thought there would be. Nevertheless, um, I'm gonna go and wind these onto my Nitty Naughty. I'm gonna do it in not the proper Nitty Naughty configuration, but the more H configuration, so we can compare the two gradients if we end up with gradients. I mean, we'll see what we've got. I'm partway through winding the yarn, and I think that it's a little hard to see the variation. I mean, it's definitely present, but it's really subtle because of all the sparkle. So I wanted to show that as we go to the center, we do see more of the original color uh, showing through. Ooh, there's a red spot from probably color breaking. So the color we have on now is absolutely darker than the original color. I'm just not sure how much asymmetry we might see. Um, although I am feeling a difference between the two skeins. One of them feels a lot more green than the other, but we'll see as we proceed. I think that given that things started dry um, when we were squishing the dye through, um, maybe we get less asymmetry this way than if we were to dye this, these balls of yarn in an immersion dye bath. So, anyway, I'm going to keep winding. I wasn't sure how well these differences would pick up on camera, but I think you can clearly see one of the skates has a lot more green in it, and then the other one has, is more purple overall. We do have gradients. There is more color towards the outside of the balls, and as we get to the inside, there is a little bit less. It's just these two balls are different from one another. If we had had a ball with the two strands wound together, then we might have had something matched. But because we were doing something so random, we ended up with a lot of differences between the two. And so that is totally fine. But you can see how from one bag we have a very different dye lot. Now granted, the yarn is absolutely related, and you can imagine, say, starting at this end to do some kind of like shawl 
working through the deepest, blending this with the deepest over here, and then working through. You could get some beautiful fade in there, or you could make a sock from each ball of yarn and have beautiful sibling socks. That is always an option as well. Now, I still need to go and wash this one more time. I plan to do that off camera, but if I do observe any bleeding or anything, well, then I would pop back in and let you know, but I'm not anticipating we'd see any bleeding. Now, the original yarn color is this pastel purple up here. I do have two more balls of this yarn in my stash, which I could go grab for a color comparison, but since I'm pretty sure that's the original color, I don't think that I need to go grab it. But I'm bringing up the other yarn because what should I do with it? I originally bought this yarn because I hadn't ever seen a Lurex yarn before. And it's still very unique because it is not Superwash and it's Alpaca versus the Superwash Merino Lurex Blend yarn that I buy from Wool to Die For. So please let me know what kind of techniques you might want to see on this yarn base down in the comment section. Or I guess to the side in the comment section. I think YouTube has been playing around with where comments are located. So it might not be below, it might be to the right of the video now if you're on a desktop. Karen, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Putt Weekly. I really hope that you're gonna love your super, super sparkly yarn. And if you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Karen, um, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. As a last minute lab partner, I've already filmed the dyeing project, but then I can film some shout outs to insert into the video for you. And you get to see, uh, when you look through the, the description, a little sneak peek of the technique and the colors that are, will be part of the video. I'll have the listing linked down in the video description. Karen, thank you so much again for being my lab partner. And now as for the sparkle, I'm not sure how much the shine is going to come through because I do have a soft box up right now, but it is so shiny. Oh, I love it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and please subscribe and turn on notifications. This is the biggest way that you can help support the content here uh, because the more you interact with the videos, the more YouTube will show them to people, and well, that is wonderful. But if you'd like some other ways to help support the content, I do have a Patreon. Uh, you can learn more at patreon.com slash chemnitz, and there's some really fun perks over there. Uh, you can join here on YouTube to become a channel member and get fun badges and chemnitz emotes. Or if you love the yarn that I dye, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It's filled with yarn featured in my videos, and if you check the listing descriptions, you can see the video title where the yarn was dyed. So when you're working with it, you can watch me dye those skeins. Uh, and I think that that's just something very, very unique about my shop. Uh, and well, it's a lot of fun and it all goes back to helping me get more yarn to create more videos. <laughs> you can find links for everything in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Pre-orders for the 2024 Summer Mini Skein Mini Series yarn sets are now available in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. This year's SMSMS will start on July 8th and every night there will be a new yarn dyeing video featuring mini skeins and creating mini skein sets. And your mystery set of five 20 gram mini skeins will be featured in one of the videos. There's a huge variety of yarn bases that you have to pick from. And the whole thing is gonna be so much fun. There'll be cute packaging, fun extras, and there's even some add-ons. And you can learn more over in the listing in my Etsy shop. I'll have it linked down in the video description.